You ever have this happen to your left hand fingers? What's going on? It's Jason Ethan. One of the most common problems that beginners face is collapsing left hand fingers. It's an easy habit to fall into and it can be so frustrating because it'll really limit your growth and development. So in this video, we're going to go through the three reasons why you probably don't wanna collapse your left hand fingers. And I'm going to show you three exercises that you can practice right now to develop a nice, strong, curved left hand. You want to keep your left hand fingers curved for three main reasons. Number one is it's more efficient. Curved fingers just go up and down like little keys on the base much more efficiently. If you let your fingers collapse, you're actually adding an extra motion where you're putting the finger on the, on the string and then this knuckle is buckling, whether it's in thumb position or down here. There's actually more energy and there's energy being lost that doesn't need to be lost. Number two, it's just stronger. Arches are stronger than collapsy things. I mean, look at bridges or anything like and that's true with your left hand too. This is a position of strength. And if you think about grabbing onto a pole or carrying groceries home from the store, you name it, uh, you're not going to be walking around with your fingers like this, right? This is a strong gesture and this not so much. Also, by playing on the tips of the fingers, you're basically playing on the bone here rather than this fleshy part. So it's going to get a clean, crisp close to the string. It's going to be more precise and articulate. And once you get the technique down, you're going to find that it's actually more relaxing to play on the tips of your fingers. Now, I don't play on the tippity tip of my fingers. A lot of people want to know where to land on your finger, and that's going to depend on your hand shape. But here is about where the string lands on my fingers to give you an idea. So it's not like right up on the nail, but it's not on the pad. It's just a little bit close to the nail, but not quite like, you know, right on top of the nail or anything like that. And there are some more advanced things as you get going with the base, but the important thing for me is just think about keeping your fingers curved from the get-go. Number three, you'll play cleaner and more in tune with curved fingers. There is this habit of like pulling in that is exacerbated by flat fingers. And also because you're not cleanly closing the string, it can be really easy to play out of tune. When I'm curved, the note just kind of happens. If I play flat, there can be this sort of flexibility of pitch. I can just feel all sorts of tension happening right here just by letting my finger collapse. So really thinking about keeping them curved is important. Before I get into the exercises, one of the things that'll help the most is just making sure that your thumb is in the center of the back of the neck. So if you let your thumb come around like this, which maybe you do if you're playing guitar or something like that, but that's going to automatically put your hand at a disadvantage. So for double bass, my approach at least, is thumb in the center of the back of the neck. We could draw a line down the back of the neck and then the fingers will be much more likely to stay curved. Exercise number one is called tapping and it's something that not just bass players do, all string players do this when they're starting out. It's a common technique and it's quite simple actually. I just start by tapping my four fingers. What a crazy exercise, right? I'll tap them on the side of the neck. I'll tap them over here on the rib. You can drive your neighbors crazy doing this. I'll tap on the top of the base. And I'm just trying to get in the habit of landing with my fingers curved. You are very unlikely to tap the base with your fingers going like this. If you are, try to get them curved. And you just want to think, how would you shake someone's hand? This is a natural body motion. You want to get comfortable with this. And that tapping, I find, especially once we start to tap on the side of the fingerboard or between the strings, that can be useful. And even like tapping then finally on the strings and just getting a little percussion sound in the left hand. You do this for 30 minutes, put the bass down, go do something else, cut 30. You do that for 30 seconds, go do something else, come back 30 more seconds. You can do it on your arm and just getting in that habit that will help to strengthen in, in a sense, but it will also help to just develop a curved approach. And I like to think about kneading clay with my left hand more than typing. If I think typing, that's where I'm gonna get more like flat fingers and, and collapsing fingers. If I think kneading clay, so like if the base wasn't here, my fingers would come into my hand like this. That's a helpful approach. After tapping, I like to do what I call snapping, and maybe there's a better word for this, but I put my first finger down, doesn't matter what note, and then I put my fourth finger down, and I put it down using a bit of left arm pronation. So I'm not just typing, I'm also turning, like opening or closing a doorknob. And if you can get that percussive sound 
and this is more challenging than it seems for a lot of people starting out, you're going to be in good shape. And now, I wish that I could put on some sort of um, metaverse kind of <laughs> thing and let you see exactly or feel exactly what's happening in my hand. But what's happening is I am pronating and then I am just totally relaxed when I land. I'm not going, oh, I'm not muscling my hand. I'm just letting it come down and totally relaxed. I'm just flapping on the base like this. And this is a motion you can also practice on the side of the base, right here, on the neck of the base. But these two, tapping and then snapping, are a great way to develop curved fingers. And as you're doing this, just be mindful of where your thumb is. Be mindful of that your fingers are landing in this kind of a spot so that they're not, you know, right here on the pad, that kind of thing. These two exercises will take you a long way. And my third is one that I've done for years. I just did a video with the wonderful Susan Hagen about her warm-ups and this exercise she calls Neener. I will link up to her complete video. It's absolutely worth watching if you haven't checked it out. This exercise combines kind of a rolling motion with a little bit of a snapping motion. And the exercise goes like this. One, two, four, two, one, four, two, four. And you can do it separate bows, you can do it slurred. And just to give you a close-up of what that looks like on the left hand, we're just like this and we're gonna go. And I'm just making sure everything is staying curved. And starting on the G string is a great idea because it's the thinnest string. It's going to take the least amount of muscle to get down. And once you get that going, you can move over to the D string. All the other strings, you can go up and down different positions. You can slur, go fast, go slow. It's a wonderful exercise. And those are the three exercises that really help me to keep my left hand fingers curved and have really helped my students. If you enjoyed this, check out this beginner technique playlist we've got linked up. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>